Hello friends, today's topic is Liddle syndrome. Liddle syndrome is a cause of pseudo hyperaldosteronism and the reason we call it pseudo hyperaldosteronism is actually the aldosterone levels are low but the clinical presentation is similar to that of a hyperaldosteronism patient. To understand the basics of Liddle syndrome, first we have to understand the physiology of reabsorption in the collecting duct cell. So uh, this is a collecting duct cell, uh, this is the luminal side, this is the basolateral membrane from where the reabsorption happens to the capillary. Now the function of aldosterone is that aldosterone acts upon the mineralocorticoid receptors and these mineralocorticoid receptors increase the number of epithelial sodium channels on the luminal side. So these are the epithelial sodium channels on the luminal side and these increase the reabsorption of sodium. The sodium is then further transferred across the basolateral membrane via sodium potassium pumps. So overall aldosterone is acting via these mineralocorticoid receptors to increase the number of active epithelial sodium channels uh, thereby increasing the reabsorption of sodium. Now along with this there is passive reabsorption of calcium via some specific channels that are called as TRPV5 channels. They promote the reabsorption of calcium which again gets transported across the basolateral membrane via sodium calcium transporter. Now the reabsorption of sodium via these epithelial sodium channels does two things. It increases the excretion of potassium. So the potassium that is coming in gets transported into the lumen. So therefore the potassium excretion is increased and it also increases the excretion of protons. So more of protons are lost. Now it will be easier for us to understand the pathogenesis of Liddle syndrome. In Liddle syndrome there is a mutation in the epithelial sodium channels. The epithelial sodium channels are mutated. Uh, important point to remember that it is commonly the beta subunit that is involved. However, the mutations can involve the gamma subunit also. Another important point is that these mutations are gain of function mutations, which means that these epithelial sodium channels that are affected actually increase their ability to uh, reabsorb sodium. So more number of such epithelial sodium channels are present at a time. Now how does this manifest? So as we can easily see first thing it's going to do is it's going to increase the sodium reabsorption. Right? So once the sodium reabsorption increases how does this manifest? This brings in hypertension. So these patients usually have severe hypertension due to a volume overload. Second thing is this also increases potassium secretion. So these patients will be hypokalemic. Third thing is this also increases the excretion of protons. So this will land up in alkalosis. The passive reabsorption of calcium is also happening. So ultimately these patients would not have renal stones. So this we can see is clearly what's happening. Now the effect of increased sodium reabsorption actually triggers a feedback response and this lowers the level of plasma renin and aldosterone levels. So if you see that the patient is experiencing features of hyperaldosteronism, hypokalemia, alkalosis, hypertension, but when we do the renin and aldosterone levels, they're actually low. This is why we term Little syndrome as a cause of pseudo hyperaldosteronism. Now for the treatment part, it's quite easy to understand that we have two type of uh, drugs available with us. Once that block the mineralocorticoid receptor, that drug is pyranolactone. 
and the other drug is that blocks the epithelial sodium channel so they are amyloride and triamterene so now it's very easy to understand that actually there is no role of mineralocorticoid receptors here because the epithelial sodium channels are no longer in control of mineralocorticoid receptor there is a mutation that directly involves the epithelial sodium channel so blocking the mineralocorticoid receptor will not have any effect on the patient so what we do is we use drugs that block the epithelial sodium channel which are amyloride and triamterene and these drugs are actually useful in the treatment of littles so this i guess covers up a uh, little syndrome and uh, all the important points associated with it i hope you liked the video if you did then please like and subscribe i'll be coming with more such videos in the future Thank you.